Hello doctors, how are you? By the way, I am Dr. J. Tiranavukarasu, Professor of Pharmacology, Demonstrative Team. This year, NEET PG 2021, I think very, very, very easy. All the questions in pharmacology are straightforward questions. Most of the questions, say 100%, all the questions from class notes only. I think if you studied the DAMS class notes, and if you see the videos and DVT and other integrated session, definitely can strike all the question easily. That much amount of easy question this year. Here I just going to discuss one or two question. The question I am going to discuss here is Tocilis map works against options are interleukin 2, interleukin 1, interleukin 6 and interleukin 8. The right answer for the question is option number C. This question we repeatedly discussing in a class. Say when I discuss in a rheumatoid orthopedic chapter we discuss this topic and we have made a COVID capsule in that we discussed about cytokine storm syndrome for that treatment we discussed tocilizumab and separately we talk about immunology and oncology where we discuss about monoclonal antibody in that area also we discussed tocilizumab so such a very famous question familiar drug answers option C interleukin 6 so how to answer this question this question related to interleukin modifiers for example, tocilizumab is a interleukin 6 blocker. It has immunosuppressive property useful for rheumatoid arthritis as well as useful for treatment of giant cell arthritis, interstitial lung disease and very important useful for treatment of cytokine release syndrome and recently emergency use approval for treating COVID-19 pneumonia also. Like that we discussed about tocilizumab and this drug causing important adverse effect. Actually it having immunosuppressive property thereby it may cause secondary infections and this drug also causing hepatotoxicity and dyslipidemia. This is again important question. This drug also causing abnormal lipid profile problem called tocilizumab. This is what we discussed in our class notes. Now, we also discussed one more thing in our class notes. What are the drugs modifying interleukin activity? For example, we had a chapter called interleukin modifier in that I have discussed analog of interleukin 1 receptor antagonist. I can see simply IL-1 antagonist. For example, we have Anakindra. It's very famous drug useful for both rheumatoid arthritis as well as gouty arthritis. The other interleukin-1 blocker includes Relonacept and Canakinumab. So all these three drugs are IL-1 blocker useful for treatment of both rheumatoid arthritis as well as useful for treatment of gouty arthritis. And then this another famous question we discuss in class analog of interleukin 2. The analog of interleukin 2 is called aldose leukin. Leukin, leukin means interleukin. So aldose leukin, a analog of interleukin 2 that is useful for treatment of RCC that is renal cell carcinoma and also managing melanoma. Then we have interleukin 2 receptor blocker, the so called basiliximab and dacalizumab. All these are immunosuppressant, they are targeting against IL2, the so called CD25. This also repeatedly asked MC question, we discuss in class notes. Basiliximab and dacalizumab. Then we have combination of interleukin 2 plus diphtheria toxin that's called denileukin diphtitax. Denileukin, leukin mean interleukin, diphtitax, 
stereotaxin this combo interleukin 2 plus diphtaxin called denylukin diphtax useful for treatment of cutaneous T cell lymphoma the so called Cesare syndrome and for this we discuss in class notes for treating this cutaneous T cell lymphoma we have one special group of drug called histone D acetylase enzyme inhibitor the so called orinostat romidepsin it is extra point what are the histone D acetylase enzyme inhibitor useful for treatment of cutaneous T cell lymphoma so called Cesare syndrome in me orinostat romidepsin and we talk about interleukin modifier next is interleukin 3 and 4 antagonists it is another important question called Petra Kindra it is under clinical trial for treatment of bronchial asthma and then we have IL-4 blocker called Dupilumab this drug useful for bronchial asthma as well as useful for treatment of atopic dermatitis this is also important point Dupilumab IL-4 blocker then very famous question interleukin 5 antagonist for example we have resilizumab mepolizumab and new drug called bendralizumab all these are interleukin 5 blocking monoclonal antibody useful for treatment of bronchial asthma severe eosinophilic bronchial asthma in that one special question look here we have one drug called mepolizumab we know that is a interleukin 5 blocker this is a special drug useful for treatment of symptoms of Chuck-Tross syndrome Chuck-Tross syndrome he syndrome in complex of symptom the symptoms are he eosinophilia headache and vasculitis they have vasculitis problem for treating eosinophilia headache and vasculitis the so called Chuck-Tross syndrome we can use Napolizumab actually Chuck-Tross syndrome is the adverse effect of leukotriene receptor antagonist for example we have something called Monte Leucast, Zephyr Leucast when we give these drugs prophylactically for asthma chronic therapy of Monte Leucast may cause Chuck-Tross syndrome to control that symptom we can try mepolizumab that is interleukin 5 blocker then interleukin 6 blocker this is what our question today in NEET PG 2021 the interleukin 6 blockers are we have tocilizumab one more new drug called sarilumab both are useful for rheumatoid arthritis in that tocilizumab is now become very famous because of the covid infection useful for covid pneumonia as well as useful for treatment of cytokine release syndrome called tocilizumab and then interleukin 1 and 6 antagonists it's a common question we have one drug called one group of drug called corticosteroids the steroids having immunosuppressive property because of what mechanism that is because of interfering IL-1 IL-6 activity look steroid having so many action anti-inflammatory action anti-cancer action like them how they have immunosuppressive action mean it is by inhibiting IL-1 IL-6 so IL-1 and 6 antagonists mean think of steroids and then IL-8 blocker this is new drug called Riparixin it is under development to control the neurological deficits in a patient with the transient ischemic attack TIME transient ischemic attack in this to control the neurological deficit we can try Riparixin it is under evaluation under trial then another famous interleukin modifier the analog of interleukin 11 very 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 important the drug name is operlvekin the operlvekin useful for treatment of anti-cancer drug induced thrombocytopenia 
Opal is a fantastic drug useful for treatment of anti-cancer drug induced thrombocytopenia. And then we have interleukin 13 blocker for example, tralokinumab, lebricuzumab. Both are monoclonal antibody useful for treatment of bronchial asthma. And then we have interleukin 17 blocker for example, IXC, Iskizumab, Omodric Bradolumab, both are IL-17 blocker useful for treatment of plaque psoriasis. And finally, we have interleukin-12 and 23 blocker, IL-12 and 23 blocker named by Ustikinumab. Ustikinumab, this drug useful for psoriasis as well as useful for inflammatory bowel disorder also. Like that in our class we discussed tocilizumab in detail and we also covered other interleukin modifier in our regular notes. Okay. So I think the straight question, easy question. I think all my Damsonian done a very good job for this question. I think so. Okay. The next question I am going to discuss is, look here. Analgesic drug useful in renal failure and also patient on dialysis. Which is the analgesic safe in case of kidney failure? Those patient is on dialysis. Options are indomethacin, naproxen, diclofenac and astaminophen. I think it's a very, very, very straightforward. Only one thing. If you know astaminophen is also called parastamol. If you know this point, answer simple, very simple. Okay. See, indomethacin, naproxen, diclofenac are very strong non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. They are the one causing nephrotoxicity. Whereas acetaminophen, the so-called parastamol, do not cause nephrotoxicity. It causes mainly hepatotoxicity. So answer for this question option D acetaminophen the so called parastamol. Now how to go through this question this is a very very easy question Any, all I think all people will done a good job for this question very simple question. Anyway I will teach you some interesting facts regarding analgesic and nephrotoxicity from Goodman Gilman and from nephrology textbook. Look here. When you talk about NSAIDs Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug may cause nephrotoxicity by what mechanism? Look, actually we want to think of prostaglandin. The prostaglandin is having vasodilatory reaction, thereby improving the renal blood flow, thereby maintaining the good kidney function. But NSAIDs are acting by inhibiting proteins, the prostaglandin synthesis. When NSAIDs inhibit prostaglandin synthesis, mean they will reduce the renal blood flow. By reducing the renal blood flow, NSAIDs will cause pre-renal acute evil, called pre-renal azotemia. See, uh, renal failure can be pre-renal, intra-renal, post-renal. NSAIDs causing pre-renal acute kidney failure. That is because of reducing the blood flow to the kidney. It's a basic. But extra points, extra points, look here. For understanding NSAID and nephrotoxicity, you should know basic. The basic is, look here. What Goodman and Gilman book says, prostaglandin. Prostaglandin normally inhibiting the reabsorption of chloride. Prostaglandin normally inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium chloride. And prostaglandin inhibits the action of antidiuretic hormone. Generally, generally speaking, prostaglandin inhibiting reabsorption of sodium chloride and also inhibiting the actions of ADH is what normally happening. Now coming to my topic. We know NSAIDs are acting by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis. So if NSAID 
inhibit prostaglandin synthesis mean there will be too much of reabsorption of sodium chloride that may cause hypertension problem and there is a too much of action of adh that may cause water retention so one of the most important problem nsds may cause sodium water retention salt retention water retention resulting in hypertension problem that's one important point another important point when they give nsds they going to inhibit the prostaglandin action thereby thereby they going to be too much of reabsorbed sodium chloride in the pct when too much of sodium reabsorbed here only small amount of sodium will be loaded on collecting duct thereby less chance of secretion of potassium and hydrogen that mean nsd going to cause retention of potassium resulting in hyperkalemia problem okay that's why when you give nsd with acetal angiotensin converting and seven inhibitor see all the renin angiotensin aldo system blocker will also cause hyperkalemia so when you give nsds with ace inhibitor there be severe risk of hyperkalemia that may cause cardiac arrhythmia so nsds by inhibiting prostaglandin synthesis causes hypertension due to sodium retention and also fluid retention due to action of adh and also they causes hyperkalemia problem that may cause arrhythmias apart from this nsds also ca can cause interstitial nephritis and nephrotic syndrome the other adverse effect of nsds on kidney they cause interstitial nephritis and nephrotic syndrome that is what nsds next chronic use of high dose of combination of nsds that to in a frequently ut patient in a recurrent ut patient risk of analgesic nephropathy also this may be leads to chronic kidney failure and they may decrease the concentrating capacity of renal tubules and may also cause sterile pyuria like that so nsds definitely have a risk of causing nephrotoxicity either causing pre renal azotemia interstitial nephritis or nephrotic syndrome and may cause sodium water retention causing hypertension and also risk of hyperkalemia and finally one more point we have one drug called indomethacin that drug can be useful for treatment of water syndrome water syndrome is a congenital kidney disorder where there is mutation of sodium potassium hydrogen sodium sodium potassium two chloride sodium potassium two chloride symbols see in the loop of henley we have sodium potassium two chloride symbols mutation of the symbols may cause water syndrome where the symptom similar to loop diuretic adverse effects factors by hypokalemia hypochloremia metabolic acidosis with the normal bp and also hyperplasia of the justa glomerulopathies so for treating this electrolyte imbalance we can try indomethacin alone or sometime with spinal lactum a potassium spinal diuretic so remember a nsd useful for treatment of symptoms of water syndrome in answer is indomethacin and water syndrome is a mutation of sodium potassium two chloride symbols symptoms will be similar to loop diuretic adverse effects and finally our option is answer number d acetaminophen see acetaminophen nothing but paracetamol it is an active metabolite of phenacetin see phenacetin causes analgesic nephropathy so this drug was withdrawn 
whereas its metabolite paracetamol that is not causing nephrotoxicity that is available. Of course, paracetamol is a COX-3 blocker acting on brain hypothalamus level controlling fever. It is mainly antipyretic as well as analgesic. It does not have that much amount of anti-inflammatory action. See, NSAIDs are acting by inhibiting COX-1 and COX-2, thereby reducing the formation of the housekeeping prostaglandin in the kidney, whereas paracetamol does not going to interfere the housekeeping prostaglandin action in the kidney, so this is not going to cause nephrotoxicity. It is mainly COX-3 blocker. But coming to the adverse effect, most important point, paracetamol generally undergo metabolism by one enzyme called CYP2E1. CYP2E1. It is a microsomal enzyme. By this enzyme, it undergo phase 1 reaction. The big famous one metabolite called N-acetylbenzoquinoimidamine. This metabolite actually a hepatotoxic metabolite. But a question, yourself, myself, all of us are taking paracetamol for headache or body pain, but we do not develop liver damage because this hepatotoxic metabolite further undergo phase 2 reaction by glutathione conjugation, thereby this is become non-toxic and become inactivated. That's why we don't develop liver toxicity. If at all, if a patient taking high dose of paracetamol, they have high risk of hepatotoxicity. That is because of this metabolite. That means to treat the hepatotoxicity, I need some glutathione. So I have to replace, I have to regenerate glutathione. For that, we have one thing called n acetyl system. It's a drug of choice. N acetylcysteine is the drug of choice for treatment of paracetamol toxicity. Another option we can go for methionine. This also can be supplemented. Both the drugs are glutathione replacer, glutathione generator, thereby useful for treatment of paracetamol poisoning. And remember, if a patient taken single dose of 10 to 15 gram paracetamol, there will be too much of hepatotoxic metabolite that is very risky, risky. Okay. Another interesting question, look here. We know paracetamol undergo phase 1 reaction by CYP2E1. That means, if you are inducing this enzyme in, paracetamol rapidly going to form hepatotoxic metabolite. That means, any drug inducing this enzyme in, will aggravate paracetamol induced hepatotoxicity. For example, chronic intake of alcohol. Chronic alcohol is going to induce a CYP2E1. So, paracetamol when given to chronic alcoholic is a more risk of hepatotoxicity. Similarly, so, one more very interesting point. We have one drug called isoniazid anti-TB drug. Generally speaking, isoni acid is a microsomal enzyme inhibitor. Only one exception, this will induce CYP2E1. Generally, isoni acid is a microsomal enzyme inhibitor, but it will induce this enzyme. Thereby, this INH when given with the parastomol, parastomol rapidly going to form hepatotoxicity. So, combination of isoni acid with the parastomol more chances of hepatotoxicity keep in mind and finally what is the toxic dose what is the fatal dose of paracetamol the hepatotoxic dose of paracetamol a single dose of 10 to 15 gram that is 150 to 250 mg per kg okay whereas 20 to 20 gram or more as a single dose may cause fatal adverse effect so what is the hepatotoxic dose what is the fatal dose? This is also important. Okay. So, just for sample, I mentioned only two questions, but all the questions, whatever asked in a neat page regarding pharmacology, I think everything state question, everything discussed in your class notes, TND notes. Okay. So, I think if you regularly attended the class, if you studied the TND notes, if you watch uh, videos, watch the all the COVID capsules, every videos, 
definitely actor you can score a very good rank that's damn sure anyway i think everybody went very very are done a good job so when i see the feedback i so i feel so happy so all the very best in my next video i will cover all the question and put as a single video i am going to cover all the questions what we asked in nate pg 2021 okay thank you all the best